What's with the suit and clown makeup? Uh, my agent has me going on a three-day book tour. She seems to think that it'll help restart my career. First stops at the mall tonight. Congratulations. And uh, what about this? Is uh, that part of your act? That's actually my old man. You could say clowning runs in the family. Ah, oh, so feel free to eat anything in the fridge. Make yourself at home. What's this? Oh, don't touch that. Sorry. You're getting awfully nosy. Sorry, I'm just uh, getting to know the place. It's just an old prop of my dad's. It's got sentimental value. But, um, um, I, but I gotta run. Here's the keys and um, good luck. Coming into the project, we already kind of had a, a little bit of just like a basic prop we knew we wanted to work with. Our uh, the guy, the leader, uh, Danny Bean, uh, he had his old 1940s ventriloquist dummy. We're like, we should try to find a way, no matter what we get, to work that in. Um, and honestly, the rest of it sparked from Scott Spears' suggestion that our theme actually be naked clowns. Um, and so we were like, well, let's run with the clown idea. And we tried to run with the naked clown idea, and that ended up not working out for us. Um, and so then it just became this, um, the three of us worked together, uh, me, Danny Bean, and my wife, uh, Nikki, uh, to try to come up with uh, a kind of a story idea that first night, right after uh, getting our theme of what's in the dark. For our team, it was uh, pretty unique. We kept it really small. We had a total of seven people. With, with crew, actors, musician, everything. Seven people total on the whole production. And uh, we all had very limited schedules, actually. Um, the, the guy in charge worked late nights on the weekend. I worked during the day. So we only had Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And so we did the first week. We tried to uh, put together a script, and we kind of talked over the internet with stuff. Uh, and then the second week, uh, we kind of wrapped up the script and we realized there were lots of problems so we didn't actually get the storyboarding uh, which was horrible because then Thursday we had one night to shoot and we shot from about 6 p.m. until about 3 a.m. Um, and just walked through the script as best we could. Luckily it was a single location shoot so that worked out well but it was very trying and luckily we were all really good friends so moments of tension we were like able to work them out pretty quickly, but I mean, there was definitely a little bit of struggle and, and until we actually saw it come together, we were like, man, I think this is just gonna, it's all gonna fall apart. This is gonna be horrible. <laughs> so you got a plan. There's so many shots of convenience and the kinds of stuff like that. And when you get into something like this where you just don't have time to go back and reshoot sometimes, like you have to plan. Not having storyboards for us was huge. It was really hard. Uh, but the great part of it also was that uh, some of us got to separate out and do some new things. Um, I handled a lot of the motion graphics and stuff, so I had some time to just spend flexing my muscles there and learning some stuff, playing around some, with some new things. Um, I did a lot of the art design, so I got to create posters and photos and some other stuff that, you know, I, can, I have the skills to do, but I'd never done them for a film before. Um, and so, it, I mean, it was just a great, great experience to be able to do all that kind of stuff you have to have a story that makes sense and it's always you know keep it simple right evaluate the assets that you have on our production like we knew we had an apartment we knew we could guarantee two actors and so we wrote the script so that we were telling a story about two people in an apartment because that's i knew that's what we had and we could guarantee and that's just you know know what you have plan and and tell a good story that's the that's the major thing